Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made a complete set of concrete dumbbells. In total I spent about $70 on just the materials, which is about a tenth of the price that you would spend if you were trying to buy a comparable iron set of dumbbells. Um, all it takes is just a little bit of planning, a little bit of time in terms of the actual labor, and you end up with some pretty sweet looking dumbbells that make you feel really rugged when you're lifting them. Um, so I'm going to start out showing you a couple websites that I use to plan out my dumbbells and then we'll get into the actual process of making the dumbbells. We're going to be making the 60 pound dumbbells that you see there. Okay, so these are the two websites that I used, inchcalculator.com slash concrete weight calculator and calculator.net slash volume calculator. The first thing that you need to do is figure out what volume of concrete you need to get to the amount of poundage that you want on each side of the dumbbell. So we're making a 60 pound dumbbell. We want 30 pounds on each side. So you're gonna just throw in a number here and hit calculate and that'll give you the poundage that that volume of concrete equals to. So this is 26 pounds. So we want 30 pounds, so let's just go to 350. Uh, 30.3, 30 so pretty close there. 345, 29.95. So 345, 346, yeah, so 345, we'll say. 345 square inches of concrete will get you to 30 pounds on each side. So now that we know the square inches that we need to get to, we can come over to our volume calculator for the tube and change our dimensions here to get to that volume. So our outer diameter is from the outer edge to the outer edge which is going to be eight because that is the diameter of the bucket that I bought. So it's an eight inch diameter bucket. That's gonna be our outer diameter. The inner diameter is the PVC pipe, which is one inch. And the length is what you're going to be adjusting to get to that volume that you're looking for. So the length is basically how thick each side is. So let's put in five inches, hit calculate. Okay, so we know at a five inch length, we've got 247 square inches, which is well below the 345 that we need. So let's move that up to six inches. Six inches is almost 300. Just go up another inch. Seven inches, exactly, essentially. 345, 346. Yeah, all right, so seven inches is what we know we need to cast in concrete to get to 30 pounds on each side. So now that we know that, we know that we're gonna have 14 inches of concrete and I've been doing five and a half inches for the handle. So in total, we should have 19 and a half inch length PVC pipe cuts for these 60 pound dumbbells. Okay, so from here to here is going to be concrete on one side. Now we need to measure the width we want for our handhold from here to the next spot. I've been doing uh, about five and a half inches to allow to place your hand in there. So I'm gonna measure out five and a half inches. So with a five and a half inch gap here, you've got plenty of space to put your hand in and angle your wrist without touching the concrete on either side. That's been really comfortable for me with the dumbbells that I've already made, so I'm gonna keep that consistent, five and a half inches. So now from the other edge of our handle, we're going to measure seven inches so we can get our seven inches of concrete on the other side. Okay, so now we're just going to line up the edges, make sure those are flush, mark our next cut for our other dumbbell, that same length. Might as well just rough in the handles. And you'll see why it's relatively important to know where the handles start and end on the next step. 
Okay, so we've got our two handles made here. The next step is going to be drilling holes on each side of the handle so that we can put our bolts in place. What these bolts do is hold the concrete on so that it doesn't slip off. It gives it something to grip onto. So this is the step that it's important to know where your handle starts because once you get into the smaller weights, this handle gets a lot closer to the end here. So when you get down to your 10s, 15s, 20s, this is a very small gap that the concrete's gonna be filling. So when you put these bolts in, or whatever you're using, you need to make sure that the tip of it isn't poking out of where your concrete needs to be. So you need your holes to line up so that this bolt's not gonna stick outside of your concrete. It doesn't really matter for these big 60s because you can drill the holes where it they're not gonna stick outside the concrete. Okay, now that we've got the holes drilled, we're gonna just feed the bolts through here and get them half and half through each side. Okay, once you're done, you should have something resembling these. Just crisscross bolts. The next step is going to be cutting out some steel mesh to fit inside the concrete to strengthen it, keep it from cracking. We want 31, and the reason is because you lose 3 to 5 percent of the weight of the concrete when it cures. So, an extra pound and a half would be 5 percent, but the handle itself with the bolt weighs a pound. So we'll take off a half pound of each side. So we're just going to make it 31 and see what happens. Number two. Call that good. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is push these down towards the bottom half. Now, I'm going to put one side of the dumbbell in, try to center it as best I can. Okay. That passes the eye test. Now I'm going to throw in three more of these, just for a little added support. Give it a tap to level it out, get any air pockets out, make sure that it's just concrete down there, there's no spaces. Okay, so once you get to this point, there's a couple things that are very important for you to check to make sure that your dumbbell is going to be level on all sides. First thing you are going to want to check is if your bucket is level. I'm working on some sawhorses, so it's some uneven ground. Um, so just grab a level, check to make sure that you're seeing that your bucket is level. Check both sides, check both axes. This bucket's level because I already checked the level on here and I leveled it out. So bucket is level, that's good. That can be an issue because if it's unlevel, it's leaning to one side, say it's leaning 
this way, then your concrete is going to sink to one edge and it's going to create issues when you're trying to lift the dumbbell because it's going to be heavier on one side than the other side. Um, and it's going to want to rotate in your hand, which is not good. Um, so you really want to make sure that your bucket's level. That's the most important thing. Second is that your handle is centered. In order to center your handle, just measure from one inside edge to the other inside edge. Subtract the width of this handle and then cut that in half. And that's what this is. I just made a little cut out of some cardboard so that I can make sure that each edge is equidistant from the handle to make sure that the handle is centered. So, just gonna check, make sure. I mean, this is not the most accurate measuring tool, but it gets you pretty close, pretty darn close. So my handle's centered. Last thing I'm gonna check is just make sure that my handle is level. It's not leaning one direction or the other. If it is, just correct it just slightly. All right, that's it. The bucket's level, handle is centered, handle is level, straight up and down. You don't have to support this with anything. It's not gonna move because the concrete's gonna keep it in place. Let this dry overnight. Tomorrow, we're gonna flip these over, pour the other side, put the other side in. And once we get the other side in, we have a few issues to deal with because once you're curing the other side, you've got a bunch of weight on the top of it that's going to be difficult to manage and you're working in a smaller space. So I'll show you what that looks like tomorrow. All right, it's the next day, and our concrete is cured. Uh, every one I've made, when it dries, it's got this like flaky crust on top that comes off. I don't know if it's because I'm adding too much water or that's normal, but that's been like that every single time. Um, you can see our estimate of that line right there. That's where that's where we expected it to be. So it's just about exactly right where we expected it to be to get the way we wanted it at. This one, I must have had the mesh underneath the very bottom of the PVC pipe when I pushed it down to the bottom of the bucket, so it's a little bit off, but that's okay. It'll just give us more space for the actual handle. Okay, so now what we need to do now is separate the concrete from the bucket, so I'm just gonna kinda pull the edges and try and separate the sides of the concrete from the bucket as much as I can. Now this is a really, this is a really deep pour, so I'm not able to actually separate the side very much. It's not gonna be able to actually separate very far down. So I think this one's gonna mostly be about tapping it when we turn it upside down to get the concrete to come out of the bucket. So this has been my general technique is just get a little scrap piece of wood, put it on the bottom, and just kind of tap. Not too hard, you don't want to put too much pressure on the concrete in any one particular spot. That one was tough, but it got there eventually. All right, so now we're gonna wait to see how accurate we were getting the weight where we want it. And it's at 31. And that's pretty good. We're looking for 30 and a half because the handle is one pound, so we want each side to be 29 and a half. So we're within a half pound of where we want it to be. That's not bad. Pretty much every dumbbell set that I've made has been within like Anywhere from dead on to over or under by a pound to a pound and a half. So I'm really happy with that weight actually, that's pretty close. Um, 
that's kind of the, one of the hardest parts about working with concrete is estimating what its weight is going to be at once it's actually cured. I went for 31 pounds, so it lost a pound of weight and I was expecting it to lose a pound and a half. So that's kind of why the tolerances are kind of large because it's just kind of hard to figure out how much weight loss there's going to be once the actual concrete cures. So the one on the right is 30 and a half, the one on the left is 31. Just to give you an idea of the tolerance that you work with when you're using concrete. This one on the right I just rotated. You can see it's pretty level now. The other one, if I rotate it back, it's lower. So this one on the right wasn't as level as this one on the left. But shouldn't really make much of a difference. Okay, so we've got the other half poured. We've got the first layer of the steel mesh put down into the bottom. So now the trick is going to be setting the other half on top. Hopefully we've got enough space here to put the second layer of this mesh on top once that's over it. Um, and then balancing this other half that's already cured on top of it and we'll use tape to get it in place. Um, hard part's getting it completely centered and balanced vertically. So, first thing we're going to do again is to level our buckets and then we'll go from there. Alright, so we're going to go with this one first. I'm going to try and center it, lower it down, put the steel mesh second layer on, and then we'll try and make sure that it's perfectly level and then we'll get it taped up in place. I don't know if this mesh is actually strengthening it or not. I imagine if it cracked, it would keep it together more. But in terms of actual strength of the concrete, probably not doing too much. Okay, next step. Making sure that our handle is centered. I can tell it's not right now. Okay, I've got it taped up into place here, just as a rough estimate. Gonna go around with my little makeshift measuring tool and just make sure that we can get the handle as centered as possible. So I need to come that way a little bit. And this way is actually good. So I'll just tilt it that direction a little bit. And that was pretty good actually. So the handle's an equal distance from each edge and it looks like we're perfectly leveled there. Okay, so this is how they look all taped up. Just kind of crisscross the tape on the top. That is going to leave like an interesting mark on it when they cure. It'll be lighter in those spots where the tape is at. So if you care about that, you might want to put something between the tape and the actual concrete itself, but if not, then this does the trick pretty well. Alright, it's the next day. They have cured. We're going to take them out and paint the numbers on them. That's what it looks like. This side has been cured for 48 hours. This side just cured overnight. 
It's a lot softer on these edges here. I could press on this and break these corners. So you kind of need to be careful when it's first curing um, because that's when you're most likely to get these breakage points. 48 hours, it's a little bit soft, but generally it's a lot harder than this. I'm gonna weigh this and see how accurate it is. Sixty point two. All right. So we got really close with that one. It might lose a tiny bit of weight still with curing, but that's probably right about where it's gonna be. So I'm really happy with that actually. Next. Number two. Sixty point eight. All right, we're within a pound on each. So about a half pound difference between this one and the other one, which is good with me. And that's the whole process. Just rinse and repeat as many times as you need to get the weight amounts that you want. I love how these turned out. I really like this industrial look with the stenciled letters. It makes it look really rugged. It makes you feel like a caveman when you're lifting it. So that's just kind of an added bonus. Um, I also do actually really like the PVC pipe handles because they warm up as you use them, which kind of gives it a little bit more grip. Like they're already pretty grippy itself, but once it warms up a tiny bit, it's even more grippy. Um, that might be a problem though. If, if you're a really sweaty person, then this might slip in your hand, but uh, you can just add some grip tape around that if you, if you need that. <laughs> but again, overall, I love how it turned out. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.